I am about to spend $30,000 in the next five minutes buying the most futuristic tech on the internet. And then we're gonna test it to find out if it actually is the future or if it's all just marketing nonsense. So what's the first thing I'd wanna futurize? My TV? Oh, of course. Xiaomi released a transparent TV. I knew this was a thing already. I didn't realize you could actually just click buy. Okay, I have like a billion questions about this. We gotta try it. What are the things we expect the future will have? What about this? Uh, invisibility buy. Oh, this is great. Yes, we need to do an invisibility shield. If you haven't seen one of these already, it's gonna feel like magic. Futuristic bike. I remember seeing this a while ago on the internet as like a concept device that could hypothetically exist. 3,496 pounds, it's like $4,000. There's no way we can have the opportunity to test something like that and then not do it. What would a person from the future use as their tools? The Neo Ruler, rule, rule the scales. I didn't realize the battle for rulers was that intense. So this thing is claiming to be a speaker that can focus its sound output directly to one person. And a whole speaker's made of glass as well. This is so futuristic. Jim. Ooh, that's interesting. So it's like a smart mirror, but it's also saying that it contains your beautiful new personal trainer. Benefit from AI powered form feedback, live body tracking and rep counting, all in a hologram wall mirror. I'd be dumb not to give it a go. We can't do a futuristic tech video without a robot. Uh, so this is world's first direct drive, self-balancing, wheeled-legged robot. Feels like they really wanted to be first at something. <laughs> I say that, but this actually looks amazing. I don't think I've ever seen a robot with this level of agility. Okay, well, this one has my attention. Um, you can ride it. Hey, eight miles per hour. I'll never miss a flight again. Oh wait, it seems like the same company also has another suitcase that follows you. Add to bag. Mm. The new Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. I have heard that these glasses are the best implementation of the smart glasses concept to ever exist. How close can you get to a real life hologram nowadays? You can actually get something called the Looking Glass Portrait. Oh, it's the only commercially available display on the market that's able to showcase 3D content without the need for eye tracking or glasses. I'm still very confused, but this is the kind of thing we need to test. I remember this company, Woodger. They make these like uh, haptic vests, so you wear them and you plug yourself into like a game you're playing and that suddenly allows you to feel the game you're playing. And it looks like they've managed to condense that experience that previously would have involved you wearing this basically jumpsuit to just a strap. Oh. Speaking of straps, one strap, endless possibilities. <laughs> Flexible to stiff with a, <laughs> with a twist. Yeah, boy. Okay, marketing aside, this actually looks like a really impressive product. <laughs> this actually looks like a really, really impressive product. Like it allows you to wear your phone around your neck or around your wrist or around your waist and then just twist it to make it stiff. Oh, actually, I do know a tech company whose entire thing is being futuristic. Gravistar. This is cool. This is my jam. There's a whole category of speakers called ferrofluid speakers. They use a magnetic fluid to create a visual response to music. These pencils have a really interesting mechanism that allows them to self-sharpen. Okay, stop me. I don't think I've ever been this excited for the stuff to arrive. It's all finally here. Some of this stuff took over two months to arrive. So in a way, we very much are filming this in the future. So let's go roughly from least expensive to the most expensive to find out how much it really costs to experience that next era. So just $10 self-sharpening mechanical pencils. So you know when you're using a normal pencil, the reason it gets blunt is because as you're writing, you're holding the pencil from one consistent angle and kind of sanding away at the tip. So these guys realize how to fix that by creating a system such that every single time you apply and remove pressure from the tip, it rotates the lead. So that even if you're writing from one consistent angle, you're actually equally using every side of the pencil. There's really not much to say about it, apart from the fact that it really does work and every pencil should use one of these. The entire sharpening industry would disappear. So I'm gonna give this a six out of 10. So then all the way up at $60, we have the futuristic charger from Gravistar. And actually, while we're at it, let's just do all the Gravistar products. So that's the earbuds and speaker. Whoa. If nothing else, it all looks cool. 
Let's hope there's more to it than that. Okay, so the charger. It doesn't initially strike me as the most space efficient with this whole transforming, standing, sitting design. Like they've used a really high tech material called gallium nitride to be able to get it to a really condensed size, but then bulked it back up again with all the external fluff. Like it's a 65 watt charger, which is not bad. That's two times faster than the iPhone's fast charger. But then at the same time, if all you wanted was a 65 watt power brick, you can get one in a smaller footprint at a lower price. It's not really futuristic. You're paying for design. You're paying for these rotating ears. You're paying for the fact that the eyes light up. You're paying for the fact that it transforms from a sitting to a standing position, but actually only if you don't have your plug in on top of that, because then it's locked in. Five out of 10. But then with the earbuds, the design actually has a purpose. These things feel so premium. Like, listen to these sounds. Oh, it's got an RGB lighting strip baked into the charging case of the earphones. You can very much tell this is made for someone who really wants to carry around a gadget. Let's do a sound test. They do fit really well with a good amount of passive noise cancellation without any tech going on. That's a bit of a shame. The one earphone that is working does sound pretty good, but the fact that straight out of the box, one of them isn't connecting properly, it's not a great sign for the software stability to come. But you know what the funniest thing is? You know the main extra function of this earbud case? It's a bottle opener. I couldn't believe it. Let's, uh, let's see if it works. Whose idea was this? I mean, earphones, bottle opener, the kinds of situations that you would use both of those in are so different. But also, more importantly, was it worth this? Was it worth carving out a massive triangle in this valuable real estate that is your charging case at the direct cost of battery? Futuristic in a dumb way. Three out of 10. That's nice though. But the speaker is the thing that I'm most excited for. I'm already liking a lot of the little touches, like these tiny little rubber pads at the bottom, which means when you plonk it on a table, it massively softens the thud. Okay. Oh. Ready to pair. Bluetooth connected. I can respect that. Some nice startup sounds. Oh, there's a ton of different lighting modes as well. You know, for something that's designed to be straight out of a sci-fi movie, this is actually weirdly well suited to camping. Ah, okay, so it's got a small tweeter here, which is what's handling the high notes, and then a larger subwoofer coming up the bottom, which is what's handling the bass. And it's pretty mid-range, to be honest. It sounds like a $50 speaker. The lighting's cool though, so I'll give it a five. All right, let's see what the lighting of the future has in store for us. This is the bioluminescent orb. And I gotta say, I do love the idea of a future where we're not just pumping out greenhouse gases to fuel our increasingly electric lifestyles, but actually harnessing the Earth's natural resources to live a sustainable life. And this might actually be one step closer to that vision. So apparently in this bag right here is a specific species of live microalgae that can take in carbon dioxide, release oxygen, kind of like a plant. I just dropped some on my table, but also so in that process, produce light emitting chemicals. Okay, so we basically pour what's left into the orb. I'm gonna leave that in a place where it's getting plenty of light for now. And then what it says is that it's only going to glow, not just in the dark, but specifically at nighttime. So we will just cover the other stuff and loop back to it at the end. Oh, I've just realized there's a massive do not drink on the front, which means someone's tried it. I can totally see how you'd think this would be a superhero origin story. I don't blame you. I'm slightly curious. Okay, and while we wait to see the kind of lighting that nature can generate, let's find out what humans have managed to do. Because this product right here claims to have bottled both fire and the northern lights into something that can sit on your shelf. Okay, so really all this is, is a bunch of high power LEDs at the bottom shooting up at a deformed glass cylinder, which refracts them. And I mean, there is stuff to like here. Like the glass cylinder is surprisingly high quality. The reflections it makes on the walls and especially the ceiling, really genuinely interesting to the point where I would say it kind of delivers on its promise. Plus you get a little remote to change the colors. I really like this one. It reminds me so much of the reflections coming off water. But here's the thing. I hate these remotes. These remotes are a sign that what you actually have at the core of this product is very cheap LEDs. For me, tech that is genuinely smart is tech that will use your phone or voice for controlling. But the more fundamental problem is that this was meant to rotate by itself. There's a motor there and when it arrived, it was already fried, which does not bode well for the overall quality of this thing. So the idea is great, it can be pretty, but I mean, this is just a bit sad, isn't it? Four out of 10. At $80 then, we have what's claiming to be the future of the phone stand. And while initially I could not wrap my head around how a phone stand could possibly be $80, now I can see it. This is the morph strap. You know, the whole flexible to stiff thing. Yeah, it's that. Now the company's being pretty tight lipped about how exactly it works, but it seems like this lever here is basically a crank that tightens or loosens the internal structure sitting under this fabric. So the company's idea is, let's say you're walking around on holiday and you carry your phone around your neck. 
as you do. The second you want to take a photo, bam, selfie stick, albeit a slightly bent one. I mean, that's not really what I'd use it for. What I'm more interested in is, can this be a way to mount your phone onto like any surface to take a weird shot, for example? The answer to which is, yeah, pretty much. I just had an idea. So I'm thinking, hypothetically, if I was in the back seat of a car and I wanted to watch a TV show while I'm on the go, it does work. Seven out of 10. I feel like there's a lot more you can do with this than I've even realized at this point. And then to measure how long your stiff phone strap is, here's the Neo Ruler, which is such an awesome name for what seems to be the one ruler to ruler them all. You place the ruler next to it, you raise the slider till you reach the point you want to measure, and then that on screen is the exact measurement. And there's an obvious initial question here, in that my $1 ruler does the exact same thing. Who asked for them to overcomplicate it this much? Well, for starters, this thing is accurate to the nearest 0.01 millimeters, which is a level of precision that you can't get by just eyeing it. The fact that it's digital means that you can change units on the fly. You can flick between millimeters, inches, even meters if you want to. But also, you can do crazy stuff. Like, let's say you're measuring an architect's drawing or a map, for example. I just bought one yesterday and it's just a bit bigger than I was expecting. So, you know a lot of these drawings have a scale, right? Like uh, 1 to 500,000. Or in the case of this map, 1 to 5. <laughs> You can let the ruler know that scale, and then as you're measuring, it will not just tell you how many millimeters it is in reality, but also what the actual real life distances of that space really are. Or for another example, let's say that you wanted to divide something evenly. You can choose on this ruler how many divisions you want, and then you literally just pull the slider across and it will tell you exactly where to make those divisions. Niche, yes. Completely next level for the people who actually have use for it, also yes. Eight out of 10. So now, on the complete other end of the spectrum, our shoes. Yeah, apparently future shoes only come with half the packaging. So we already know that this shoe, it bends in half. But why? Well, this entire range of Flyees products was actually inspired by a letter from Matthew Walzer, a 16-year-old living with cerebral palsy, who said that because of his disability, he couldn't tie Nike's shoelaces. So Nike set themselves an internal challenge to basically try and create a pair of shoes that you could take off with no hands. And this actually requires quite a big rethink of how the shoe works. Like, you need a hinge that allows the shoe to snap into the open and closed positions. You need this tension band that spans both sections. You need to make sure that the sole stays flat when the shoe opens so that it doesn't form a crease. And then on top of that, a kickstand, which is what actually allows you to kick the shoe into this folded position. So, how well does it actually work? Ooh, it's a real life product showcase. It's more strap time. Crank that into position. There you go, look at that. It's the cameraman of the future. Okay, so foot slides into this top half. It feels pretty loose right now, but then, wow. All of a sudden, that's like a perfect fit. That's the easiest shoe putting on experience I've ever had. And then when you want to take it off, a little bit of pressure at the bottom there, and your shoe folds in half. I was skeptical, but now I am completely sold, at least on the vision. It's yet to be determined if all these extra moving parts add any extra fragility to the shoe. But this is a concept that I want to see more companies trying. Nine out of 10. So I've tried haptic vests before, but what's really interesting to me about this Wuja strap is how it's got the potential to still add another dimension to games and music without having to look like you're gearing up to go to actual wall. Okay, so the way this works is it basically sits in between your sound source, let's say your PS5, and then your sound output, let's say your headphones. It intercepts that audio and then it turns the low notes, which could be gunfire or you crashing into the wall in a car into physical impact that you can feel, and then passes on the rest of the audio for your headphones to play as usual. It does have physical ports for when you want to manually wire something in, like I've done for my PS5 controller, but it is also fully Bluetooth, so that's how it's paired to these headphones. Would you look at that? Oh, and then there's also an app where you can control volume, you can control intensity. Obviously, we're on the maximum, but also you can control RGB color, which feels a little silly for me for a device intended to not actually be looked at. I'm feeling so much impact just from the standard loungy, jazzy menu music. You know, this is the kind of product that is very easy to write off as a gimmick, but I would actually say, as far as the experience of feeling like you're in a car, this goes probably further than one of those like steering wheel accessories that I've seen a lot of people buy. Like I feel like I'm feeling the real texture of the road and the grunt of the engine. I guess if you're a massive car enthusiast, you'd also probably notice the way that different cars feel physically. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna steer off into the fence. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. 
So the actual final impact was not actually as much as I thought it was going to be. I don't think this has the single-handed ability to deliver the authentic car crash experience. This probably isn't the way to make it feel like if you're playing COD that you're actually heading into a real war zone. But what it is, is a really effective way of adding in that general lower level immersion that you probably don't realize you're missing until you take one of those off. I wasn't wooed. Jude. Okay, also around this price, the invisibility shield. Let's have a look. So this is literally how the thing comes. And I know it looks like I just went to my dumpster, I pulled out a sheet of corrugated plastic and I stuck it here. But no, this is a specially crafted material where every single one of these vertical strips is a curved lens that bends light away from the center, which has the very surreal implication that you could be looking head on at something and not actually be able to see it, which is useful for I mean, yes, magic tricks, but also stuff like camouflage in the military. I wouldn't say it's useful for most people, but from the perspective of it being a working science lesson in action, give it an eight. And then, even more futuristic than that, the holographic display. Very few things scream future like hologram, but then I suppose at the same time, we have seen so many poor executions of this concept. It makes it feel like you're physically holding a memory in your hands and you're able to look around within it. It almost feels like a very good trailer for immersive content. So stage one of what this thing can do is turn a 2D image into a 3D image. So this right here is a normal photo that I took on my iPhone. And look at this, the software actually allows you to visualize what it's like to look around inside it using AI. And look what happens when I pick up this depth in a slider and drag it across. You can actually see the image being manipulated in real time. It's kind of a shame that the actual resolution of the output isn't higher, but at the same time, to help you visualize how impressive this is, you know those holographic bookmarks you get, where when you look from different angles, you can see the same image from like four different perspectives. This is kind of like that, but instead of there being four different perspectives, it feels like an unlimited number of perspectives, like it's literally a hundred, on top of the fact that it's actually a moving screen. But there is also a level up to this. So this program is also connected to ChatGPT and can apparently allow you to talk talk to AI connected to a holographic character within this frame. Right, so if I select the robot... Well now, ain't that just a hot tamale of technology? Spill the beans and let's have a nanny. This is weird. <laughs> so this thing has the intelligence of the AI models that we know, but it's actually also able to communicate that within its own pre-programmed personality. I'm like shaking a little bit. <laughs> You got it, partner. If X plus 69 is 72, what is X? Well, hot diggity dog. God. If X plus 69 is 72, then I reckon X is a sneaky little varmint trying to hide <laughs> in plain sight. What? But fear not, partner, because this old cartoon android is quick on the draw. If we subtract 69 from 72, we find that X is a mischievous little critter equal to three. What a weird way of saying three. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Mr. Who's the Boss video? Well, ain't that a nutty question? No. It does feel like a bit of a demo piece in its current form, um, in that it's not a final product with a particular purpose, but equally, I'm shocked right now. My brain is spinning with all the things this could potentially mean for the future. Like, like imagine if you had like a table with this technology and you were playing holographic board games with the person sitting opposite you, each of you having a different viewpoint of the same situation. Oh my God. This is a 10 out of 10. This is a taste of the future. A solid 10 out of 10, partner. Trippy as hell. Right, one of the things that I think about a lot when it comes to the future is how language barriers just won't be a thing. Tech will be able to make it so that you can still have completely seamless conversations with people who otherwise you would never have understood. It's just a question of when. So are these that product that can take us there? Okay, so Drisha, you are a Spanish speaker. Well, you have spoken Spanish at some point in your life. Yeah, this is gonna test my high school Spanish. High school Spanish, okay, that's good enough. So you put one earbud in, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put the other earbud in. And there's a mode here we're gonna click called Simul Mode. Hello, how are you today? Hola, como estas hoy? Bien, gracias. You, you? You're hearing what I'm saying. Can I have a loaf of bread, please? What's it saying to you? Puedo darme una de pan, por favor? That's what it comes up as. Oh my God. Okay, so this is not completely new tech. Like it's not dissimilar in translation ability to something like Google Translate, but it's the form factor. It's the fact that I can have one earbud, you can have one earbud, and the microphone is really close to your mouth so it picks up the sound well. And then it's the app. It's the app that doesn't require you to keep pressing buttons. It just listens out and allows you to have that conversation in real time. We've used the Google app a few yeah. times to try and talk to people who don't talk English. And it's kind of like tap, 
wait, tap, wait. When you're using Google Translate, you very much feel like you're using an app. Here, you just feel like you're looking at the person and talking to the person. Yeah, and I can see this slowly being added into things like glasses and Apple Vision to I mean, make it seem more seamless as opposed to like going on holiday and giving it to someone. That is such a good point. Thanks. <laughs> of course that's going to happen. Could be really cool. It's a good enough product that this is going straight in my travel bag. And it can also do 40 languages and 93 accents right now. The two things I don't like are that one, the app tries to charge you for downloading languages offline, which when you're in abroad countries is probably a likely thing you're going to have to do. And then also, the actual hardware construction feels a little bit cheap for the price these are. Like if they were just normal earphones, you would expect them to cost no more than like $50 for a build like this. So overall, it's an eight. Time for the Meta glasses, which obviously, I mean, they're not a cheap product, but at the same time, given how expensive a normal pair of glasses from this company is and how far ahead the Meta glasses supposedly are, I was expecting this to be much more. Okay, so let's be very clear. What this isn't is some completely straight out of a movie pair of augmented reality glasses where like I can see you and then like your name and your age next to you. We're not there yet, but what it is is a pair of real and rather stylish glasses or sunglasses that you can put onto your face, connect to your phone and make phone tasks more seamless than they already were. Like music, they've got speakers that angle down into your ears. And okay, I mean, there's not exactly an established scale for how good glasses should sound, but I would say the audio quality is not far off something like the third gen AirPods. You control things using this capacitive area on the side here, like scrolling volume, for example. And then there's a capture button up top for the cameras for both photo and video. You can also use voice commands, but I mean, imagine standing in a packed train like Meta, take a photo. But here's the thing that shocked me. The photos and videos that you take on this are actually good. It's not quite like top end smartphone, but this thing takes 12 megapixel photos and 1080p videos using some of the same processing techniques that your smartphone uses, like HDR, like the stabilization. So you don't get overexposed skies or everything covered in shadow, like I expected coming into this. The key downside for me though, is that the camera is not gonna cover your entire vision and you can't preview what it's capturing like you can on your phone. So it will sometimes result in a situation where you shoot something, you later realize before you you post it that actually you want to crop it a little bit to make it central. But then at that point, it's actually more effort than if you had just taken your phone out in the moment and done it properly. But I do want to stress, this is exciting. It's the first product in its category that's actually, I would say, delivered on its promise and feels like a polished finished product that you could see yourself using. So I would give this a nine. And now, moving further up the ladder, the concept of this next one is absolutely bonkers if it works. A speaker that can focus its sound in one area is like the entire perks of the isolation you get with headphones, combined with the freedom of being able to listen to something via speakers. And actually, while we're at it, let's just do this at the same time as the Ferrofluid speaker, since unlike the name suggests, it's not actually a speaker, but is designed to react to a speaker. It's hard for me to describe how excited I actually am for this. This is one of those very big moments where I'm actually experiencing something for the first time that could be groundbreaking tech. And I want to start by saying this ferrofluid thing over here, even without how it reacts to music, just using a magnet over it, is fascinating. It's basically a magnetic fluid, but because you never really see magnets in fluid form, it almost shows you magnetism in action in a way that's much more real than you'll have ever seen with solids. That said, the actual product feels like it needs a bit of quality control. Like there's some ferrofluid just stuck to the inside of the glass. It's LED backlit. Oh my God, it's responding to my voice. Huh. I have never in my life seen anything like that before. <laughs> okay, so we'll put that there. And now the focus sound. This is a very weird piece of technology. It genuinely looks like nothing is going on in here. It's a really light, completely clear speaker with just a little bit of a metal body. So I imagine almost all of the audio processing and the actual tech is happening in this box here. This is just the projector for the sound. Okay, immediate first impression. Right now it's firing directly at me. It's not the most bassy or punchy speaker, but I can hear it very clearly. I'm gonna turn it away now. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. I had never experienced anything like that in my life. So when you're looking directly at the speaker, you're convinced the sound source is here, but as soon as you rotate it, it feels like it's almost throwing the audio source to that wall there or that wall there. So when you turn the speaker away from you, it's not like it completely mutes it, but you're probably hearing it at about 25% of the volume versus when it's facing you. So how? 
Well, the way that normal sound waves work is they travel out in all directions until they dissipate. Imagine like throwing a rock into a pond and seeing those ripples come out of it. But this directional audio speaker actually instead uses ultrasonic waves, which are super high frequency and therefore much shorter wavelength, which means they spread out much less. They're completely inaudible to the human ear, but the thing is, as soon as they come into contact with the human ear, they distort back into an audible frequency. So the target can hear the audio, but the other people around them can't as much. Is it worth buying? I'd say probably not yet, given that you're having to give up a lot of sound quality to be able to get this effect, but the potential is massive. So for the purposes of being futuristic, that's a 9 out of 10. And this Ferrofluid speaker, surprisingly cool. This is an 8. This is the Airwheel SR5, the auto-following suitcase. And then this is the SE3S, which is the rideable suitcase. I actually really fancy a sit right now. So we're going to start with the rideable one. And I got to say, I don't think I've ever wanted to like a product this much. Like, OK, when in your life have you ever seen this before? Bombastic side eye. There's a massive power bank attached to the back of it, which means that you can plug your phone in to charge it. And then you sit down on the thing and, I mean, come okay, on, come go. on. <laughs> I mean, when you think about what riding around on a suitcase looks like, I don't think you'd imagine this level of speed and turning torque. This is literally like Rainbow Road in Mario Kart. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! So you've got one toggle that's accelerate, you've got one toggle that's a brake, but the best bit is what happens when you press both together. This is how you go through airport security. Drisha, you've got the app for this suitcase. Yeah, I can see how fast you're getting. How fast am I getting? You're joking. Oh. It feels a lot faster than that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Drish, stop! Drish! <laughs> this is really weird. It, oh. It just says 50. My <laughs> God. Uh, Drish! Ow. Okay. Yeah. So, on one hand, right? Nothing beats this. <laughs> But then on the other hand, as a functioning suitcase, there's a uh, room for improvement. Ooh. So, I mean, for starters, they make you carry around this ridiculous butt pad, which really they could have just baked into it. Like, I don't know what kind of holiday you can pack for in there. At a squeeze, that's two shoes and maybe a butt pad. <laughs> Plus, like, the website for this thing is so atrocious that I have no faith that any of the tech in this is actually going to last. And then we have the auto-following suitcase. This is the one that, from a technical perspective, I was actually looking forward to more, but it's actually quite a lot worse. So it has very similar perks to the other one in that because it's got a massive battery bank, it can charge your phone. It's actually also got a biometric fingerprint scanner for unlocking. But the key differentiator is this wrist strap. So this wrist strap essentially communicates with this sensor via ultra wideband, which is like the same technology that your iPhone uses to find your AirTags, for example. So I am now connected, which means if I walk more than five meters away, then, like an overly attached child, it will come sprinting to me. Can it outrun me? That's the question. Ooh, nearly. Obstacle avoidance on point. So this is part of what my problem with the product is. These two down here are infrared obstacle avoidance sensors. They're not very good at avoiding obstacles. <laughs> Do you trust the technology with your life? Go, go, go! It slowed down. So the problem is not that it's unimpressive. It's actually pretty cool that it works most of the time. It's just that for your most valuable possessions, it has to be 100%. And it doesn't feel like, from what I've used it, that I trust it completely. There are a couple of safeguards in place. Like, for example, as soon as you lose it, your wrist starts beeping and your suitcase just starts <laughs> wandering around and around like that, looking for the sensor. But still, you only have to lose something once. And I feel like this will do it. Five out of 10. All right. Magic mirror time. So I started using this thing a couple of days ago and it's a really unique product. But I think the best way to show you is to actually start a workout and you'll see how it works. And I will say they have got the fundamentals right. Like the software feels very slick. It runs at a good frame rate. Although just because of what the product is, you do get this slight ghosting type effect. It's almost like it's an infinity mirror bouncing back and forwards, which reduces the crispness a little bit. So the first thing you do is you pick a class. So you can either pick it based on the duration, you can pick it on who's leading that class, or you can pick it based on what body part you feel like working out. It's got a whole load of different settings you can play around with. And what I like about it is that it's not assuming that you have access to an entire gym suite. It's very much able to tweak itself around what you do have. And now we go. And now it initializes body tracking. It's just making sure there's one person and one person only in the frame. So when I saw this for the first time, I will say as a fan of technology, 
This felt pretty cool. You've got all these fitness instructors who've clearly filmed themselves on a green screen background, so they've been able to cut it all out and almost appear like they're holographically there in your room. But it actually gets cooler, because you click right here and you have access to music. And every bit of music outputted by this mirror is generated by AI. So every time you do a workout, you are hearing different tracks. And then part of why that helps is that you can separate the music volume from the speech and sound effects volumes. Because yes, it talks to you. Like, let's say I am actually following along to this workout, it will tell me off when I'm doing it wrong. Bring the weight up to your shoulders. Right, so is it good? Well, there's a lot of things I like about it. I like the fact that it gamifies workouts. I like the fact that it feels like there's almost a, a watchful eye over you so that you have some company. And it does smart things. Like when you first input the weights that you're lifting, it will slowly use artificial intelligence to amp up the workouts to make sure that you're progressing. The bone that I have to pick though is with the way it's marketed. This thing calls itself a personal trainer replacement. But really what this is, is an oversized smartphone with a front camera, with a screen, with a set of speakers that does use intelligent software to watch you, but it can't see every angle. And you can obviously trick this if you want to. Like, it currently says I've done seven bicep curls. I haven't done seven bicep curls. Two plus two is four. This isn't a complete replacement for a personal trainer, but it is really good for people who don't have access to one. So eight out of 10. You know, cycling used to be such a massive part of my life growing up. And so this idea of me revisiting it now, but using something that looks like it's straight out of Tron Legacy, is kind of crazy. Okay, we have to talk about this product. Is it futuristic? Yes, hell yes. This thing is straight out of my bike driving fantasies from when I was a kid. Like for example, it has a kickstand that no joke, once activated, can only be deactivated with fingerprint access. It's got a microchip inside of it that will alert your phone if it ever gets stolen, and it will give you the exact GPS coordinates to go find it. It's got integrated signal and brake lights, so you don't have to wave your arms around like this when you're gesturing that you want to turn right. And then also headlamps that are sensitive to the light in the environment, so they only turn on when they're needed. And all of this stuff is great. Like using tech to make the biking experience safer, that's exactly what it needs. And then you have the elephant in the room, hubless wheels. How is it that every single bike you've seen up until this point has a hub in the middle, but this one doesn't? Well, they've actually not really done away with the hub. You still need one. They've just redesigned it and relocated it so that everything that was previously happening here is now happening in a combination of here and then here. Does it have any practical benefit at all? No, it doesn't. And that brings me on to the problems. The whole thing is very surface level. Like, it's very heavy. It's got this really cheap feeling plastic coating that we actually ended up accidentally scratching earlier just trying to clean it. As far as the actual electric bike performance, it's really nothing special. Like, it's nothing better than what you could get on a $1,000 or maybe even $700 electric bike. The thing has basically no suspension. So every single bump you go over, you feel it. <laughs> but by far, the worst part of this is the tech is basically dysfunctional. We couldn't get the app to connect. We couldn't get any of the smart features to work. Customer service, non-existent. The company doesn't even seem to be properly operational anymore. Making this essentially the most expensive prop I've ever bought in my life. And I'm really upset to be honest. <laughs> $4,600, that's where we're at right now. And for that, well, this Diablo robot really has to be something special. Right, let's just get one thing out of the way. This is a very impressive product. Like, it's one thing to be able to balance as a human, but to achieve that in a two-legged machine, that requires very high intelligence. It requires the robot to be able to constantly know exactly where its limbs are, and also be able to correct itself in an instant the second something moves out of sync. You know, when you move it, it feels so powerful. Like, it could take me out if I accidentally... Oh, oh my God. Holy shit. I'm actually a bit scared now. <laughs> I'm not sure in my life I've ever used a piece of robotics that feels this powerful. So this is making me think of a couple of months ago where I tested this for the first time. It's a DJI Robomaster, and I genuinely thought at the time, this is as extreme as toys get. But that makes this very much look like child's play. But also, it can jump. You ready? Ooh. Ooh. Oh my goodness me. Let's do a backwards jump. Which all begs the question, why? Like, what is this for? And the way I see it, the best use of a robot that can't seem to fall over is to carry stuff. Right, so the mission. Coke on the robot, and I'm gonna try and deliver that Coke to Drisha on the chair. Everyone's telling me not to do this. <laughs> She's watching with bated breath. This is absolutely phenomenal. Okay, you ready? Just swipe it. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Yes! 
Other thing we need to test here is carrying capacity. So you can maximize it by going into the creeping mode as opposed to the standing mode. Uh, I probably shouldn't get on Trisha? <laughs> it works. Do you want to have a race? <laughs> it's going to give you a morph strap for when I blaze ahead of you. I should be on you so that you can catch me winning. No. No! No, no, no! No! Ah, <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, how do you stop? Oh. oh, and the final added benefit is we now have a new robot to control our camera shots. Wow. This is absolutely insane. This robot's got to be a nine. At nearly $10,000 then, welcome to world's first ever mass-produced transparent TV. And actually, now we're here, I do just want to show you one more thing. You might have heard me talking about when we overtake Apple and subscribers, we're going to build this massive iPhone unlike the world has ever seen. Well, essentially, we've started building it. We're working with another YouTuber called DIY Perks, the guy who made that crazy phone shelf. What? Oh my! <laughs> and long story short, it's going to be mind-blowing. Like, just to give you an idea, the camera on the phone is an actual proper DSLR camera, and that's just the icing on the cake. We're closing in on Apple, but we just need a little bit of help getting there. So if you enjoy our videos at all, and you want to see this masterpiece of a phone come together, then a sub to the channel would be... transformative. All right, so the TV itself, I mean, this is every bit as cool and futuristic as I was hoping it would be. It's basically like a normal TV. You've got a layer of glass, a translucent layer of OLED pixels, then another layer of glass, except that the way the blacks are represented is by transparency. And insanely cool as that is, it does create a bit of a paradox when you're watching content. Like, for example, if it does what a TV does best and produces really bright, vibrant, striking visuals, then it's not doing a very good job of being a transparent TV. And if it does a very good job of being a transparent TV, then and it's doing a less good job than a non-transparent TV. <laughs> the limitations are very obvious, like how pared back the resolution had to be. This is only a 1080p screen, which stretched out on a 55-inch panel is not the sharpest. But that doesn't mean I'm not glad this exists. Like, combine this tech with electrochromic glass, which is what tinted windows use to tint themselves, and you maybe do actually have something big on your hands. This isn't a practical TV, but, I mean, the way I'm looking at it, it's, it's kind of a piece of art. So I'm going to give it a 7. All right, just before nighttime, where we test the orb, I want to show you our final futuristic gadget. This is the Insta360 X3 camera. See, here's the thing. In most major cities, trying to use a drone to get cinematic shots of the city is strictly prohibited. But drones are not the only way to get drone-like footage. Get one of these X3 cameras, stick it onto one of the company's three-meter invisible selfie sticks, and the camera basically uses some very clever software trickery to remove that selfie stick from the image, giving the impression of a floating camera that follows you around at all times. It's quite funny, actually. It's become this whole trend. Like, you can literally go onto Instagram now and search no drone, no problem, and you'll see thousands of people who've taken stuff like this. And you would actually be hard-pressed to tell that it's not taken on a high-end drone. And here is my attempt at the same thing. That is pretty cool. <laughs> And if you want to try it for yourself, I've got us basically the best deal that you can get in the description right now with a 10% discount off the product, a 128 gigabyte SD card, and the invisible selfie stick you need to actually take shots like this. Okay, it's bio warp time. And we can't see anything so far of note. It just looks a little yellow. But if we turn the light off, we can't see anything now. But now I'm going to shake it. Oh my God, that's amazing. It seems like they react to motion. To a human eye, it's very impressive. But then I suppose, how often are you going to sit there rotating your bulb? I'll give it a six.